ACC women's basketball tonight from John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville, Virginia. And some great talent featured this evening as you bring you the Virginia Cavaliers hosting the fourth ranked and still unbeaten in ACC play, NC State Wolfpack. And alongside the former UVA standout, Lauren Moses, I'm Channing Poole. It is great to have you aboard this evening. And oh, it's been a long time since this Cavaliers team has played a game inside their home arena. More than a month, in fact. The pandemic has forced postponements, cancellations all around college basketball. But Lauren, I think it's safe to say that Tina Thompson's team has been hit especially hard. For sure. You I mean, you're coming off of another season where COVID is just hitting you left and right. Obviously not the ideal situation, but Coach Thompson told us it's going to take real discipline for her team to come back from only having two and a half, what she calls two and a half, um, practices in three weeks. That's really tough, but she does say that her team is motivated, not just to try to pull out an upset, but to just get better, to better themselves um, in this game and try to look forward to getting better every step of the way. Well, on the other side of things, NC State is rolling right now, and Coach Wes Moore, he's starting to tighten up his rotations a bit, Lauren, and we know that one player who's going to see big minutes every night out, that's the National Player of the Week this past week, senior center Elisa Kunane. She's an All-American for a reason. Look at all of these. She's getting the ball exactly where she wants. When she's comfortable, she's unstoppable. Her last outing against Virginia, she had 17.6 rebounds in 24 minutes. A lot of what Cavalier, of what the Cavaliers are going to do today is try to just get her uncomfortable, throw different defenses at her, try to try to trap when she can or when they can. So it's going to take a lot of work, um, but, but Virginia says they're up for the challenge. Well, there's a look at ninth-year head coach Wes Moore, five NCAA tournaments in eight years, leading the Wolfpack, ACC tournament champions each of the last two years after some time as an assistant a while back at NC State. On the other side of things, Virginia's head coach, Tina Thompson. And yeah, Lauren, I mean, you were able to talk to her earlier in the week. And, you know, she's not making excuses. She's not allowing this team to use the layoff that they had due to the pandemic as an excuse for their performances the last few times out. Yeah. I mean, think about the last couple of years. It's been injuries. It's been COVID. It's been having too many injuries to where they can't play. And so this is just another test for this for this team that has gone up against adversity time and time again. That's one way to look at it. You know, they've they've seen just about everything that could be possibly thrown their way. And they have the opening possession, but will get charged with an offensive foul. And that's going to give it right back to NC State as the foul on London Clarkson. Wolfpack again, the fourth ranked team in America, 14 and two. And here's a look at how they will get things started this evening. And I tell you what, the couple of transfers, nice dump off there to Kunane, who is fouled hard on the way up. But Lauren, you know, the, imp the influence that both Reyna Perez, who's in the starting lineup, who came over from Cal State Fullerton, and also Diamond Johnson, who we're gonna see come off the bench. Those two having a major impact on this team when obviously Kunane carries the headlines, but those two really big in support. I mean, they're the leaders. They're the ones bringing the ball up. They're the ones getting the ball to Kunane in her sweet spots. But they have this coolness about them. They have this, this calmness over them when they're at that, that one position where they just control the floor. And that's why this NC State is as good as they are. They're poised on offense. They know exactly what they want to get each time down the floor. Well, it certainly helps when one through five, you can shoot the three. Speaking of which, Twa off the mark from long distance. And the Wolfpack back the other way. It is a 2-0 NC State lead. And Kai Crutchfield, speaking of three-point shooting, she might be the best on this roster. Kunane going to work down low again. Boy, she is just automatic on the interior. It's going to take a lot of denying in that post to just make her feel uncomfortable. If she can catch the ball and you are directly behind her, she's going to score nine times out of ten. For Virginia, they're happy to have Cameron Taylor, Taylor Valaday, back in their lineup, missing the last game due to COVID protocols. They were shorthanded down in Atlanta over the weekend. Here's Taylor Valaday right on cue, getting Virginia on the board. Nice move inside the paint. Yeah, and she flexes a little bit too, I tell you. Coach Thompson said it, they're going to be motivated. They, they felt a sense of deja vu when those games were getting canceled, so they have nothing to lose here. Boy, look at Kunane just dominating. I mean, they run that four out, one in, and I mean, she's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one matchup all night. They're going to keep pounding the ball inside to Elisa Kunane.
Here's Amadine Twa. She's been the hot hand for Virginia, would say the last few times out. And I mean, when you got buckets going down like that, you can see why. A circus shot from Twa. Virginia back within two. Sometimes you just got to bully through there. And that's what she did there. She ended up on the floor, but she got the bucket. She's led the team in scoring each of the last six games. And there's Cameron Taylor controlling the defensive rebound, ripping it away from Kunane. Valade on the move. Back for Taylor lining up a three. Left it short. And the rebound taken down by NC State's Jakia Brown-Turner. On the kick out to a wide open Jones. A little strong, but Kunane. Boy, a one-handed offensive rebound, but the rare miss from up close. Yeah, I'd like to see this Cavalier squad get into a set, move the ball, make NC State play some defense before they take those quick shots, even if it's a three. Um, they're shooting well right now. They see there, easy layup. Just pick and go to the basket. And yeah, that's Clarkson getting free from Kunane. You're right, there is a, a calmness to how NC State runs through its offense, isn't there? A little strong off the back iron that time. Kunane fighting for the offensive rebound, but Valade controls it. Everything under control. Valade. That's good, and we are even at six. That's what Virginia needs. If Perez is going to sink off into that zone right above the free throw line, got to be confident in that shot, and Valade just sinks it there easy. Perez misses from three. This is a rarity, Lauren, to see NC State missing some early three-point attempts. But if you're Virginia, you have to know they're not going to stay down for too long. Just too good from beyond the arc. And an offensive foul this time going on Brown-Turner as Clarkson stepped in to take the contact. Well, their last game before they took a hiatus due to COVID protocols, they, they, they held NC State pretty well in that first half. They did not allow their shooters to go off as they normally do, as we see here. It's just really going to take getting up into them when they are on defense, when Virginia's on defense, and making them feel like the shot is not an option. And if you are a few minutes, seconds late, just have a high hand and contest. You mentioned that matchup back on December 19th. This here's Twa. Couldn't get it to go, but it's tapped out to Valade, who is bumped and fouled. And NC State pulling away for the 82-55 win, but Virginia was actually the better team from beyond the arc in that game. Had nine made threes to NC State seven. But again, as you referenced, Lauren, in the second half, it really was all Wolfpack pulling away. Yeah, and in part, I asked Coach Thompson about that game, and she said it boils down to being disciplined. You know, they had a lot of good a lot of good spurts on offense where they were able to score on defense. They were able to get stops, but they have to do it for 40 minutes. Valade against the double team. Gets it to go, plus the foul. We talked about Taylor Valade coming out fired up. Well, she's showcasing some smooth play underneath, and for Valade already six early points and a chance at seven. Strong body against two red jersey. She, she's coming off of three weeks. When you think about COVID protocols, it's not, it's not sunshine and, 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 you know, having fun. They're isolated from their teammates, um, from friends, from roommates even. And so you think about how hungry you are to just bounce a ball again, see the ball go through the net again. Um, you want to be on tip-top shape. And, and Valade's coming out here and putting her team on the back early. Yeah, you, you can think about it going one of two ways, really. And for Virginia, they're fortunate that for Valade, she's channeling that energy very well early on because you can imagine players being over eager, over anxious, and sort of playing out of control when they've been out for that long. Kunane, the little fadeaway, wouldn't go. And the rebound to Alea Parker. Well, again, we've talked about what Virginia has been up against, and you see how long it has spanned the time between games for Virginia. In yeah. fact, two of the last three games against NC State. The game before that Texas Southern game was on the road in Raleigh. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, that's over three weeks. And when you think about practicing, they're not practicing with their full roster. They're not practicing with their two starters. Um, two and a half practices. As you see, Lisa Kunane go up and get blocked by Leah Parker. 
they're not practicing with their full roster. And so it, it is hard. You know, you have to kind of find energy <laughs> when, it, when it comes in practice. Twa underneath couldn't get it to go. Shot was altered, and Cunane comes away with it. Now Crutchfield has numbers. The kick out to a wide open Brown. Turner missed the three. And the rebound collected by Amadine Twa. NC State just unable to find that stroke from beyond the arc early. And Virginia with the five point lead and the basketball. Drive and kick from Clarkson. Valade eyeing a three. Too strong. And knocked out of bounds, last touched by Parker. It will go back to NC State. When we come back, a timeout on the floor. Virginia up by five at home early. Well, she averages just over seven points a game for Virginia this season, but Taylor Valaday with seven points already through about six minutes of this game. And Lauren, she has come out with some kind of special energy in the early minutes of this contest. Coming out of COVID protocols with coolness, coolness and swag, and she's just reading the defense, Channing. She's taking what they are giving her, and she's not forcing, trying to get all the way to the bucket, as we've seen her do throughout this, throughout this, uh, this season. But she's just reading. She's taking her shot, and she's confident with it. See if she's building the makings of a career night here for Virginia, a player that averaged just over five points a game at Marquette last year, and a traveling violation against Brown Turner is going to give it back to Virginia once again. Yeah, time and time again, we've kind of talked about someone else for this Virginia squad stepping up and helping out Amadine Toi. And, and this is what's happening right now, an opportunity for someone who, who's not scoring or used to scoring most points in a game. And she's just taking advantage of it. Her former Marquette teammate staying with her here at Virginia and a dangerous pass from Miller back to Valade. Valaday back to Cameron Taylor. Drew a double team, lost it for a moment. Hoists up the shot with three on the shot clock. And Kunain has the rebound for NC State. Diamond Johnson back the other way. Diamond Johnson has been a spark plug for the Wolfpack. The Rutgers transfer on the ACC newcomer watch list. She launches from three. And Brown Turner, the offensive rebound. Fresh 20 for the Wolfpack, and they'll go inside to Kunane. The immediate double team there. Johnson trying to force it inside to Boyd in an offensive foul against the Wolfpack. And that's what the Cavaliers want. They're going to send that trap, make Elisa Kunane feel uncomfortable, and make sure that the defense rotates. And that is exactly what they did. Great execution from the Cavaliers defense right there. Just reading and seeing where the ball is. You see Kunane looking over her shoulder. Pressure, pressure all over her. And Valade, another hustle play from point guard. See the double team having some sort of an impact there on Kunane, who gets a break now. And Camille Hobby has checked in for the Wolfpack. Twa just inside the arc had it deflected. It will go out of bounds and stay with Virginia. Shot was blocked. A little over two and a half left in this opening quarter. It's interesting, Lauren, last time out, you know, for NC State, it was kind of the same storyline, a very slow start for Elisa Kunain. And in fact, she barely played in that opening quarter. Wes Moore gave her a nice long layoff. Great pass across the paint. There to find Alea Parker for the finish. Great pick and roll there from the Cavaliers. But yeah, Channing, I mean, offensively, they're just not getting the looks. And if they are, they're just not sinking right now. Um, a lot of them have been going in and out. And this Virginia squad, as we see here, Carol Miller coming up with a steal and heading downtown. Yeah, strips it away from Jada Boyd. And here come the Hoos again, leading by seven. Ball knocked away. Good defense there by Jakia Brown-Turner. And she is fouled to prevent a breakaway. Wes Moore is barking with the officials for an intentional foul. And I think, Lauren, that's probably something in the NBA where you're going to see the intentional foul. But not here and 
See if the Wolfpack can get any points from it in the end of it all. Hobby had it for a second, but poked free by Cameron Taylor. The Who's in the fast break again. Taylor keeping it herself. Drew three red jerseys. Now oh, coming up at 8 Eastern, we'll take you to McCamish Pavilion for Florida State squaring off against Nell Fortner and number 15 Georgia Tech on ACC Network and the ESPN app, one app, one tap. Yellow Jackets, a team that knocked off Virginia over the weekend. And Georgia Tech, I believe I saw they're getting some additional players back, but that game on Sunday, Lauren, they had just seven players available. Yeah which makes their win all the more impressive. But, I mean, also you got to think about they're thankful to have the Sunday to Thursday, the three days in between. i got to imagine those players were not going too hard in practice after a seven-player available game. Exactly. That's kind of one of those, those days where you have walkthroughs, <laughs> um, pretty aggressive walkthroughs at times. But, yeah, no, Georgia Tech having a great season so far, and it all, it all lies on their defensive end. They prioritize their defense. Speaking of defense, Virginia has been able to hold NC State to six points thus far. The best scoring offense in the conference. And it's pretty remarkable, Lauren, what Virginia has been able to do defensively early in this game. Of course, they're holding NC State to shooting 15% from the field right now. And you'd have to expect at the high rate that they do shoot that those shots will start to go down at some point. But you have to give kudos to Virginia and their attention to detail on how they want to read their defensive assignments. When we talk about Elisa Kunain catching the ball comfortably, we haven't really seen her do that too much. Um, we've had a few, few spurts early in the game, about one or two times where she was able to just catch and turn over her shoulder, but they're really taking her out of her game as well as their guards. Yeah, I mean, for a team that leads all of Division I basketball in three-point percentage, shooting 41.3% as a team, and you've got one individual on your roster that can shoot that well, and you're talking about a standout three-point shooter, but they do it as a team. But so far in this game, NC State 0 for 6 from beyond the arc. So like you said, they've got a, done a really good job against Kunain in the interior, and the shots are not going down from beyond the arc. Miller on the drive and kick to Clarkson. Across the paint, too strong with the left hand. Brown Turner has the rebound for NC State. Under a minute to go in the opening quarter. And a whistle and a foul. Aaliyah Pitts guilty for Virginia. We see Aaliyah Pitts here. She's getting some more time throughout this season. As we talked about COVID protocols and, and injuries, Carol Miller still recovering from that knee surgery that she underwent during the offseason. Pitts has been putting up some pretty good minutes, being very aggressive on the defensive end and looking for her shot offensively. That's exactly what Virginia is going to need, more players to get into this rotation and just allow their main players to catch their win. Now Brown Turner... Now three of four from the foul line in this game. And pulls the Wolfpack back within six points. See if Virginia can carry the momentum into the second quarter, but the ball off the hands of Pitts and out of bounds. Virginia was trying to find Taylor Valaday on the bench. She was back behind the bench and unable to get to the scorer's table in time as the coaching staff were yelling at her to try and get into this game. And instead, she'll take the first seat available on the bench. As Reina Perez winds the clock down. About a five-second difference. Now Boyd from the ACC logo gets her own rebound and back up and in with five seconds to go in the quarter. Can Virginia get one final? Launch up, no, stolen away by Crutchfield at the buzzer off the mark. Boy, what a series of events and a flurry of activity from NC State at the end of this first quarter. And Wolfpack are right back into this thing, but an impressive opening 10 minutes from the Wahoos. Lauren, the offense and defense getting it done for Virginia. Everything is clicking right now. They are just going in strong, finishing strong, and hopefully they'll start off the second quarter strong. Now a bit of an uncharacteristically slow start for the best scoring offense in the ACC through the opening quarter of play. 
And a credit in part to Virginia's defense, obviously, but also Lauren NC State just having some trouble getting the shots to go down early on. Yeah, sometimes it just takes reps, but kudos to Virginia's defense, like you said. They're making them uncomfortable. Every time they touch the ball, there's someone in their face, someone with a hand up. Here's Elisa Kunain who has checked back in. Crutchfield, little hesitation move, and gets the bucket to go, plus a foul. Ty Crutchfield, who had that takeaway right at the end of the first quarter and almost picked up what would have been a wild bucket. She's got one here. Tough move there. Crutchfield is one of those experienced players. Grad student comes back this year after that, that weird wonky 2020 season um, where you could kind of take the year if you wanted to and use it another time. But she's been clutch for them. She had a season high 17 points this season. And when they need her, she shows up. Yeah, a lot of these NC State players displeased with how the season ended last year in the Sweet 16 round of the tournament, thinking they were poised for a much deeper run. And so a lot of them, like Crutchfield, who you mentioned, have come back, try and see if they can make it even deeper this season. And Crutchfield could have gone out on top. She did set the single season record for three-point percentage last year, but I think she was much more concerned with the team accomplishments but one of many excellent three-point shooters on this team. Although, as that graphic showed a moment ago, you wouldn't know it from the start of this game. Bit of a lofted pass rolls off the back shoulder of Parker and out of bounds. And NC State now with a chance to take the lead. Jones around the perimeter. A whistle and a foul against Carol Miller. Yeah, that time down, I think we've seen a different look from NC State. We saw Elisa Kunain at the three-pointer coming down a cross screen where she had a bit of a mismatch. I can definitely tell you that you're going to see that a lot more often throughout this game, getting Kunain on the block with a smaller post player, um, trying not to go for that double like you see there. Well, Isaiah James has entered for NC State. Meanwhile, it's Kayla Jones knocking down the first three ball for NC State tonight. And the Wolfpack do have their first lead since way back when it was 6-4 to four Wolfpack in the very early goings of this one. Alea Parker. Out to Trois. The pass was deflected, though, and Crutchfield comes away with it. Three on two the other way, but will wisely elect to just pull it back out. Well, Jones saw that first one go down, and we'll see if that opens up the floodgates for NC State. Kunain blocked away by Parker. Jones, the follow-up, gets it to go. Thank you, pardon. That was James, Isaiah James, who again has only played in 12 of NC State's 16 games this season, but getting some very early minutes for the Wolfpack. And another steal by the Wolfpack here. Crutchfield on the move. Up across the paint to Jones for the easy two. And that's just taking care of the ball, Channing. Time and time again, we've seen Virginia take turnovers that really lead into their opposing being able to score. We'll see if they can turn it around. After a bit of a rocky first quarter, NC State has gotten it going on both ends of the floor, connecting on their first three, a sight for sore eyes for Wolfpack fans and getting it going defensively as well, Lauren. Yeah, started on the defensive end, I'd say. A couple of shots did go down, but when you can get out and run and make easy buckets like that, and, and just have good passing. You know, this Virginia squad has been turning it over the past couple times down the court, and that's really been the key to this NC State getting back in their rhythm. Balladay on the drive and kick back out to Miller, whose shot would not go down. Isaiah James came away with it. Crutchfield able to keep it alive in the corner. Crutchfield had a couple of steals over that run for NC State. Kunain had a hand in some passing lanes, but she travels here to give it back to Virginia. But you look up and it feels as though all of a sudden NC State is right back on their pace to get to 80 points a game. After a very slow start, but again, it was the very early minutes of this game. 
All the way around Valade, the wild shot. Clarkson the follow, though. Good battle on the offensive glass there from Virginia's London Clarkson. And the Florida State good transfer heads to the line. Yeah, good rebound there from the Florida State transfer. She had, does a really good job of making sure that her defender is kind of underneath the basket so that if the ball does come off of the rim, she's right there. She's in prime position to be able to get up and go back into it. Um, just had to finish that with the free throws. Just a 35% shooter from the line this season. Eight of 23 coming into tonight's game, but one of two on this trip. Virginia has struggled from the foul line as a team, shooting just 58% for the season. Nice read there by Parker, swatting away the attempted bounce pass to Kunain. And here's Twa the other way. Pull up jumper from just inside the arc, no good. Brown turn of the rebound, wants to run. Here's Crutchfield. Inside Kunain. Draws that double. Brown Turner from the elbow, and she was hit on the elbow, and we'll have a couple of free throws. I believe they got Parker with the foul there. We're seeing more movement on this, this NC State Wolfpack team. They're, they're moving the ball a little bit more. They're, they're screening for each other, and we're seeing Lisa Kunain get the ball down low a little bit more, even though she hasn't been shooting as of recent. Now we have a College Hoops triple header for you Saturday on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Starts at 4 Eastern featuring these two games. Fighting Irish, they've won five straight, and they're in Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech at 6 Eastern. And then it's Armando Baycott. He leads the Tar Heels against Georgia Tech at the Dean Smith Center at 6 Eastern Saturday on ACC Network. Our first look at Caden Lawson for Virginia in this game, who has certainly been a spark plug off the bench and see what kind of impact she can make tonight. Five-second count against Virginia. You don't see that all too often, Lauren, but defender was close enough to Twa to start that five count. And every person in a red jersey, they were denying. They were up on their player, making it really hard for UVA to get into their offense the way they want to. Crutchfield lines up the three, and that's good. Knew it was only a matter of time before Kai Crutchfield knocked down her first. The hometown kid from Raleigh. Again, a 47% three-point shooter for the season. Clarkson backing down there on Jones, and Jones comes away with the rebound. But Crutchfield is always ahead of the pack in transition, isn't she? So good at getting that run out started for the Wolfpack. She's really quick. Virginia has to have someone back in that transition defense. Usually it's the, the furthest guard away from the NC State basket that should be getting back and trying to get underneath the ball. Jakia Turner couldn't finish there. Validate the rebound, but looks like she is a bit hobbled getting into the front court. Nobody at the scorer's table. For Virginia, however, Twa had the shot blocked away. Parker the rebound and is fouled on the way up. Could be a good opportunity for Virginia to see the ball go through the net. We've seen a couple times where they're forcing it into the paint. When the paint's crowded, this NC State team is really digging in on every post player that catches the ball. Um, and that's an opportunity for guards to relocate, try to find an open spot out on the perimeter and knock down some shots. This Virginia team isn't the best three-point shooting team, but when they have the space and the time, they're able to get a good shot at the basket. First one good for Elea Parker. Grad transfer from Penn. And makes good on both. Well, Valade still sort of limping back down the court. Caden Lawson came over during the foul shots to check on her teammate, and it seemed as though Valade was saying, don't draw any attention to me and waving off any help. Boyd on the head fake, tried the up and under move, but it was blocked away. Wolfpack maintained possession. Just six to shoot now. Crutchfield swings it over to Boyd from the corner. Her three, in and out, no good. And 
Parker has the rebound. Past the halfway point of this second quarter. And the Wolfpack have built up an eight-point lead. Trying to remain unbeaten in ACC play. They stand alone atop the league standings, having won the five conference games. Lawson directing traffic. Lobs it to Valade. And couldn't get it to go. Should be a shot clock violation and will be. Ball only stayed on one side of the floor there, Channing, and that possession stayed on the right side of the floor. And if you're wanting to beat an NC State team, you have to force them to play laterally. If they can just stay up in your grill and, and do and do their thing and make you feel uncomfortable the whole the whole time, um, you're not going to have much success on the offensive end unless you're going to get to the free throw line every time. To the high post, Hobby on the turnaround too strong. And Lawson back the other way for Virginia. Asia Bristol has checked in for the Hoos. And Taylor Valade needing help gets it off to Twa, but even that pass tightly contested. Nothing doing underneath for Virginia, and ooh, almost another five-second count against Virginia there. Shot blocked away, taken by Crutchfield. Ahead for James, flying into Lawson. Big collision underneath the basket there. Will result in free throws for Isaiah James. And the freshman will be heading to the line. Virginia native from Virginia Beach out of Princess Anne High School. Getting a lot of minutes here early on. And again, did not see action on Sunday in the win on the road at Miami. McKenna Dale in for the first time for Virginia now. Back iron no good on the first one for Isaiah James. Well, every Thursday at 10 Eastern, right after our women's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game and look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. It's insight you can only get one place on ACC Network and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Amadine Twa lining up a three and missed it strong. Also on a foul on the rebound against Deja Bristol. Valade finally checks out for Virginia as Caden Lawson returns. Yeah, saw Valade limping quite a few times down there, every time on, on offense at least. But Channing, you talked to just about the minutes that these teams or the, that NC State is giving these, these players like James and Hobby. Um, and they're making great use of this time. But think about how long the season is, especially when you think about COVID and having games canceled. The experience matters, especially for teams or players who are transferring in, um, like Jakia Brown-Turner and, and other players. They, they have to have experience playing in the ACC because the ACC tournament is something that NC State owns. And they, they've been to the Sweet 16 six times. They've been ranked number one in the NCAA tournament. They need all the experience they can get. Pass across the paint, knocked out of bounds by the aforementioned Isaiah James. And now Brown Turner checks out as Reina Perez back on the floor for NC State now. Dale off the inbounds. And the shot gets the nice home bounce and drops. Virginia back within seven. So Virginia still very much hanging around. And see if the Hoos have another run in them. Or if NC State will steadily continue to build this lead. James on the pull up. No good from the elbow and a foul against the Wolfpack will give it back to Virginia. You can tell Virginia's bench is very fired up as well. I mean, they're still hanging on every single play in this game. And what an opportunity for Virginia this is. And what has obviously been a difficult season without a win in the league so far and three and nine overall. But boy, you even hang around with the fourth ranked team in America on your home floor. Suddenly you start to feel very different about yourselves moving forward. They have nothing to lose, Shanning. They're, they're out here playing basketball um, on their home court for the first time in a very long time. They just want to have fun. 
They're going to take advantage of every good play that they get against, like you said, top-ranked opponent in the nation. Now, a traveling violation against Dale. I mean, we, you know, we saw that from the way Valade was playing from the opening tip, right? I mean, it's almost with a reckless abandon, but like you said, what do you have to lose? And for the first time inside JPJ since December 7th, when they hosted American University. And it feels like eons ago, and I'm sure for the players it actually was. I mean, that's such a crazy layoff between games on your home floor. Swing pass all the way over to Crutchfield, her three rims in and out. And Twa skies to collect that deflected rebound. Now into the final 90 seconds of the half. Now that Clarkson realized how open she was as she turned receiving the pass. Now Dale with six to shoot for Virginia. It's a screen from Clarkson and her shot blocked away. And there's Crutchfield again coming up with it. Lobs to the wide open Perez and finishes with the right hand. I don't know what it is about Crutchfield, but she always is in the right place at the right time whenever a ball is deflected and she's on the defensive end. Well, whenever she's on defense and she and her man doesn't have the ball, she's always searching for opportunities to just sneak into the passing lanes. Like right now, she's up on Amadine Twa, trying to fight her over the, the screens. She's just up in you. That veteran savvy defensively, knowing where the ball is going. I mean, it's, it's anticipation instead of reaction, and she does it as well as anybody. Now, NC State now. Shot clock and game clock almost aligned, which means they can play for the last shot and have a chance to carry a double-digit lead into the locker room now. Although well, NC State, just one of their last eight from the field. See if they can write the offense here. Good hedge from Clarkson now with four seconds. Crutchfield, two seconds and one. And the shot off the mark as time expires. So Virginia's defense holds strong in the final possession, but the Wolfpack storm back in this second quarter, outscoring Virginia 18 to five and carry a nine point lead into the locker room. Wolfpack came to life, Lauren, in that second quarter after a slow start in the first. Well, they have certainly found their mojo. First starting on the outside and then getting back into the inside. Elisa Kunain starting off a lot of the momentum, but it, honestly, it's all defense for this NC State team. Well, nine point game at the break here in Charlottesville, Virginia. NC State, the fourth ranked Wolfpack. Slow start in the opening quarter, but got it going in the second. And they are showing why they are one of the best teams in all of college basketball. And living up to that 14-2 and record and 5-0 and mark in league play. Well, for Virginia, it was a strong start in the opening 10 minutes, Lauren. And it was all about Taylor Valade getting it going from the opening tip for the Hoos. She was enforcing her will early. We talked about it straight out of COVID protocols. Only have one practice in. And she came out with great confidence and ones knocking down open shots and just reading what the defense was giving her. NC State laid back early, but then they got it going. They started enforcing their will, playing like the number four team in the nation that they are. Just knocking down shots that they always knock down and getting stops on defense. Yeah, a lot of defense turning into offense, especially down the stretch in that second quarter for the Wolfpack. Meanwhile, for Virginia, Taylor Valade, the seven points early you mentioned, but a little bit hobbled in that second quarter. We'll see how she fares physically as we move into the second half. A look at some of the key stats from that opening 20 minutes. And Lauren, you know, the other thing that stands out, Virginia turning the ball over and NC State capitalizing. Of course, we've talked about it. UVA has to take care of the ball more often on the offensive end. We see Taylor Valade seven points early, but that is really when NC State just took a step outside of the zone. I felt like they were digging a lot offensively, trying to limit the Cavaliers' post players from just catching the ball comfortably. But now NC State has kind of turned things around, making more shots now than they were in that first quarter. And we'll see if Elisa Kunain can get back into this game scoring-wise, um, still sitting at six points. Well, for NC State, trying to keep the momentum alive and 
again, unbeaten so far in ACC play. And, you know, as you look at the way the standings sit right now, and still a lot to be sorted out in the ACC, Lauren. I think everybody's certain about both this NC State team and Louisville, but, you know, kind of that who is the next team that's going to emerge? You know, you think about Georgia Tech, their only ACC loss was against Louisville, and by two points at that, Carolina, their only loss all season was against this NC State team. So there's definitely a next tier, you could say, and maybe one or two of those teams is part of the top tier in this league as well. Well, honestly, I like the, the one through five. They, they've shown the, to be the most consistent team on both ends of the floor. You kind of know what you're going to get from both of them. You talk about Georgia Tech. You know they're going to play flat out great defense no matter who they have on the court and how many players are available. Obviously, we know Louisville, NC State, they're going to always kind of teeter that one and two position, and, and it always usually comes down to the ACC tournament, which NC State has been able to win in the past year. Yeah, and at different points early in this season, NC State and Louisville have been projected as number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. And speaking of Louisville, in action tonight are the Cardinals. And hey, one week from tonight, Louisville and NC State will meet in Raleigh. That's going to be a ton of fun. And keep in mind, this Louisville team has not lost a game since opening night. And that was against another top 10 team, the seventh ranked Arizona Wildcats. So, I mean, as we were just saying, Lauren, Louisville and NC State, the cream of the crop right now in the ACC. Next week is going to be a ton of fun. Of course. Louisville is just such an exciting team to watch. You really don't know who will end up with the most points, but we see Haley Vanlid, the guard, just showing out offensively 13 points early. But they have nine players in rotation every single night in the ACC. Out of the nine players in rotation, eight of them are scoring. So, so they have a, a lot of players who contribute every single night. Have to give kudos to Syracuse as well. They are known as a shooting team. They're shooting right now 37% from the three-point line. Well, back to the task at hand as we, you know, we talk about the two best teams in the ACC. But one of those two teams, NC State in action here tonight in front of us. And, you know, the Wolfpack got it going in that second half, Lauren, and, or second quarter, I should say. And they looked like the NC State team we've seen all year long and would sort of expect that to carry over into quarters three and four. Well, when you look ahead to their game coming up against Louisville, you really do get nervous at just about how they start out. We saw in Vir against this Virginia team where they were a little bit slow to not only get baskets or take baskets going to, to the hoop, but even just finishing from the three-point line, finishing from those, those free throw drumpers that they usually make. Obviously, Coach Westmore is going to want to see them be more consistent to start out games than they have been in this one. And again, last time out against Miami, it was sort of the same story. A very slow start to that game as the jumper to open up this second half off the mark from Virginia's Cameron Taylor. And here come the Wolfpack back the other way again for Virginia outscoring NC State 15 to 11 in the first quarter, but 18 to 5. It was all Wolfpack in the second. And Jones off the mark from three, but how about Brown Turner just working her way around Carol Miller to secure the rebound and keep the possession alive for NC State. Jakia Brown Turner has been very active in this game for the Wolfpack, as has the player with the ball now, Kai Crutchfield. And two-man game there, great feed for Kunane. She just couldn't finish, but second effort, easy does it, and the Wolfpack have that double-digit lead. Well, we talk about what this Virginia squad has kind of been through, coming back from injuries, coming back from COVID protocols. And it'll be interesting to see how they come out of the half, whether they're going to be a little bit cold. Um, as we see Valade kind of limping still, it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back. Yeah, Valade has been battling through really since the first few minutes of this game. And I'm not sure exactly what it was that left her shaken up. How about trying to spin it over the rim, Taylor, but could not finish. You know, Valade is really having trouble moving around out there, and you wonder how long she's going to be able to fight through. But, I mean, really a credit to her for giving it a try. Stops and pulls up from the ACC logo. And the rebound to Kunane. But a miscommunication there is Perez trying to bounce it ahead for Jones, who was not ready for it. And on the other end, sort of a wild left-handed attempt from Cameron Taylor. Back and forth we go, and frankly, both teams maybe a little bit discombobulated to start this third quarter. And we see Perez being the leader, slowing things down offensively, getting her team into a set. Jones three off the mark. 
foul on the rebound attempt there from Brown Turner. We'll give it back to Virginia. And Valade will check out. Caden Lawson returns. And, you know, it's almost as if Valade was trying to give it a go. And Tina Thompson recognized she had to get somebody else out there. You got to be smart about that. You know, Valade is a valuable player to this team. Um, but now we see Caden Lawson, someone that we've seen throughout the rotation the last two years, really be able to play a big role in this Virginia offense. And we'll see if she can really get this team going and see some balls go through the net. Lawson on the drive, wouldn't go. Cameron Taylor the rebound, her second effort wouldn't go. She's had a couple of decent looks early in this third, but has not been able to get one down. And Wolfpack a chance to stretch the lead. They will do exactly that. Jakia Brown Turner from downtown. And she has her first made three of the night. NC State really continuing to struggle. I mean, now three of 14 as a team from beyond the arc. And again, they have been basically doubling their percentage tonight all season long, shooting about 21% tonight, 41% for the season. Carol Miller couldn't get it to go. Clark's in the rebound. Shot clock did not reset. Virginia has three seconds, and Twa going to have to try and beat the shot clock. She could not, and did not draw iron. Shot clock violation gives it back to NC State. Well, when we think about the last couple of possessions that Virginia had, they're getting the shot going to the basket. However, every time defense comes their way, they're kind of shying away from it. We saw, we saw um, uh, Lawson do it. We, we've seen Taylor do it time and time again. And, and really, if they just go into the defense, maybe they can get a foul and get to the free throw line. There's an errant pass from Kayla Jones. Throwing it right into the teeth of the Virginia defense. Seems to be some confusion from Virginia trying to get into their offensive set. Twa from the corner trying to help some teammates out and getting to the right spot. Now all of a sudden, seven to shoot. Parker trying to back down Cunane. And the turnaround left short. Perez on the run. And Alexa just pull it out, but Cunane one-on-one -on -one with Parker. And we'll go to the free throw line for her efforts. And that's sort of the toughest place to defend a post player, right in the middle of the zone. Elisa Kunane does such a good job of getting the ball right there, posting up, I should say, right there, making herself available. And Alea Parker just couldn't get the block this time as we've seen her been able to get a few tips on a few, few layups here and there. But Virginia just has to lock in offensively, I think, and it'll really turn their, their defensive energy back on. Now the other Virginia native on this NC State roster, Jada Boyd from Petersburg, has checked back in. The reigning sixth player of the year in the ACC. There's Boyd. Second free throw from Kunane, just like the first, is good. I mean, there's definitely been some confusion, Lauren, in just getting to the right spots to start the offensive sets in this third quarter. Well, it's a different look. We have we have Lawson at the point point guard position. As we see, Amadine Twa. He's going to say that could fix the offense in a hurry if Twa is connecting from long distance. And a turnover by Boyd to give it back to Virginia. And here comes Caden Lawson. Twa thought about the step back. And Parker lost the handle. Here come the Wolfpack midway through this third quarter. NC State a 13-point lead. Crutchfield on the pull-up. And that rattles home. Just Great giving a little too screen. much space. Yeah, way too much space. You see a, a, a ball screen happening. You have to step up. You have to have your hand up high and just really, really have more energy. This Virginia team, is, is they're lacking energy right now, and in part probably because of Valade. Their leader out there on the court is not there pushing up on their guards. I mean, if you're Valade, again, I, I didn't see, I don't know if you did, Lauren, any specific play that 
would have resulted in her being shaken up. But, I mean, the way she came out in this game, such a tough break for Virginia now here in this second half. NC State by 15, just over four minutes left in the third. Now Taylor Valade, you can see on the bench there for Virginia, came out with a fire in her belly tonight for this Virginia team and really had lit a fire under her teammates, it seemed like, as well. But headed to the bench early in this third quarter and appeared to be a little bit hobbled, as we saw in the second quarter as well. And really a shame, Lauren, for Virginia because she had been such a strong spark for this team. Again, not an ideal situation, but it gives other players a chance to really step up when a player goes down. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the game of basketball and Caden Lawson here running the offense for this Virginia squad. It gives them a different look offensively. Twa on the drive, no good. Taylor there to clean it up. And shot clock violation against Virginia. That's a couple times. It seems like Virginia shots have been so close to the rim, you almost just assume that they had made contact, but not the case. And Virginia's now been called for a couple of those in this third quarter. You're right. I mean, Lawson, obviously just a different body type than Valade, but it's such a different look for Virginia at the point. Taller player, fast player, and just brings a different dynamic. But still obviously getting comfortable as well in leading this Virginia offense. Wow, the step back jumper wouldn't go. Kune in the rebound, and she's fouled by Alea Parker. And you talk about Lawson just being so quick with the ball in her hands. I'd actually like to see Virginia kind of do like a one for low and let her let her go one on one. Um, laterally, you know, it's really hard for her, or it's not very hard for her to get past her defender. So if she's going straight up and down back to the bas back to the basket, she might have a better chance, or even this Virginia squad might have a better chance of getting the ball in the net. You know, that was interesting the last time down, Lauren. For a second, it also looked like she might try and post up the smaller defender which would obviously be another thing she could do if she can work on that part of her skill set. Well, that's what Coach Thompson said. She's like, she actually likes to post up out, that, out there, um, not as far as the three-point line, but maybe the, the free throw line where she can just catch, face up, jab one way if she needed to, um, and go the opposite way. On the cut there, picked up by Isaiah James, defending on Lawson, as now Hobby returns. And Kunain to the bench. A lot of times this season when Kunain goes to the bench and Johnson is on the floor, Diamond Johnson, the five foot five Rutgers transfer will take over offensively, but it's Boyd this time knocking down the elbow jumper. Boyd doing a good job of getting comfortable up there. Just her sixth point in the night, but she averages about seven. And there's a lot of time left in the game. I mean, just so many different weapons for this NC State offense. A number of players that can hurt you. Miller fouled at the foul line. And free throws coming. And you think about the balanced attack for NC State, Lauren. And, you know, there have been times in this game when the player we featured, and I think is featured most games, Elisa Kunain. Yeah, she leads this team with 10 points. But I don't know, is it fair to say it's been a relatively quiet 10 points? I mean, they've been sort of spread out over the course of the game. Yeah, well, I mean, when you talk about a team that averages almost over 60 points a game, it, it's not just Elisa Kunain. You see here, we have Perez, who has had 13-point games and, and been leading scorer times. Um, Jakia Brown-Turner obviously is get, not getting as many minutes as she did last time, but her presence, her, her six-feet presence out on the perimeter, able to shoot threes, it, it's, it's amazing. And that's why they are number four in the nation, but also their ability to shoot the three-pointer. Speaking of which, Johnson launching from three, but couldn't get it to go. However, Clarkson lost the ball out of bounds, and it stays with the Wolfpack. And yeah, that's a pretty impressive balance on the offensive end for NC State. In fact, seven different players have led the team in scoring at different points this season. And then each of their first four games this season, they had a different leading score. So Wes Moore, he knows the offensive talent he's got 
on his roster. And, you know, I think it is interesting the last couple games hearing the Wolfpack talking about tightening up their rotation a little bit as they had been playing 10 or so players basically every time out before that. But now getting into the meat of the ACC schedule, you look for really eight, maybe nine that are going to see virtually all the minutes. Nice stick back there from Jada Boyd. And the Wolfpack lead is now up to an even 20. But it seems like Lauren still may be a chance for some players like Isaiah James to prove they belong in the regular rotation. A lot of that proving, Channing, not only does it come from minutes on the court, being able to produce, but it happens in practice. When you're competing with the starters and you're making the starters sort of look bad. Amadine spot for three again. Maybe she can get it going last minute, third quarter. Yeah, her second made three of this third quarter for Virginia. Here's an open James from the corner for three, and she makes good on the opportunity. A Virginia Beach native back in her home state. And for Zaya James, first made three, and her ninth made three of the season. Lawson winding the clock down for one final shot for Virginia. Shot rejected. And there, once again, Jada Boyd. I'll tell you, Boyd has made her presence felt in this third quarter, hadn't she? She certainly has. Last year, she was the ACC's co-sixth player of the year. Coming out strong off the bench for NC State, and that's what she's doing still this year. Here's Taylor for three, too strong. And who else but Boyd, the rebound. Diamond Johnson going to try to get one last shot away. Skying in, couldn't finish, but the rebound by Hobby. Will it count? They'll say no shot is the initial ruling. At least Daryl Humphrey waving off the shot, but it looks like the officials are going to go over to review. Well, NC State has opened up a 20-point lead on the road here in Charlottesville. Fourth-ranked Wolfpack in control. Now the NC State Wolfpack have a 20-point lead as we head into the fourth quarter from Charlottesville, Virginia. Back with Lauren Moses, Channing Poole with you. Happy to have you with us for some Thursday night hoops. And, well, for NC State, some new players on the floor, and they're hoping to preserve this spot inside the top five where they have been for a while. But as you see, Lauren, a lot of talent, as always, throughout the ACC. But it feels like the ACC back to its regular sort of national prominence that it's been in women's basketball. You could argue maybe a couple of down years with some of the traditional blue bloods have been out of the top 25 at times, but that is not the case this year. There is a ton of strength throughout this conference. A ton of young talent, Channing. When you look at Duke, Notre Dame, UNC, they have freshmen leading the pack every single night. Notre Dame really sticks out to me. Obviously, they're only they're 20 on the, on the AP top 25, but Sonia Centron, she's been four times she's been on the, uh, the freshman player of the week and then obviously we know georgia techs with the defense and then celeste over at duke i mean they're all amazing they all play so well within their means and their game and their coaches are doing a really good job of putting it to use yeah i think it's interesting i mean duke maybe a couple of not duke standard years north carolina you could say the same as well but you knew they were going to be back very quickly and i mean again when i say down years they were still it's not as if they fell off the face of the earth, but you know Notre Dame had that really uncharacteristically down year, and you just knew that they were going to bounce back very quickly, and they have, and they're all back essentially where they belong. And now ACC teams littering the top 25 again, but what that means is that a team like an NC State, you know, you're going to get everybody's best every time out, and the Wolfpack, it's going to be really tough to preserve that perfect ACC record, especially with what they've got coming up on the schedule. And, you know, you were just talking about the standout talent down in Durham, and you know it's always going to be a good matchup when NC State and Duke face off, and that's going to be coming up on Sunday at 4 o'clock. The really tough stretch for NC State begins. And that's when NC State really has to lock in because teams like Duke and Louisville and North Carolina, if, if they get a stretch on you, if they get, you know, 10-point, 15-point advantage on you, it's going to be really hard for NC State to get things going at that point. Nice dump off across the paint. Beautiful pass to get it to Camille Hobby. 
on the finish. But that's Isaiah James again, playing significant minutes and impressing, at least in my eyes, here tonight for NC State. And I think something, you know, like you said, Wes Moore obviously took note of something in practice to give James, who didn't see any minutes last time out, so much run tonight. And now the Wolfpack really emptying the bench. Diamond Johnson still controlling the point, but Madison Hayes, Jessica Timmons, and now Sophie Hart also on the floor for the Wolfpack. And they're going to basically get a full quarter of action here together. And James fouled on the way up. You know, you, you talked about how fun that Louisville NC State game is going to be. And with a Louisville win tonight, again, at last check, they were up on Syracuse. What does that make it? 14 in a row, 15 in a row since the only loss they had was the first game of the season. I mean, Louisville looking like, look, well, basically like the Cardinals look every year <laughs> at this point. But that is going to be so much fun a week from tonight with NC State hosting Louisville. I mean, that Jeff Balls era, it's just, it's, it, it breeds consistency. Yeah. Because not only are his players consistent under him, but when they go off and play overseas and play in the WNBA, they're doing the same thing. They're doing those moves, but but they have a little bit more muscle on them, or they have a little <laughs> bit more experience to them. But but Jeff Walsh, he really just breeds attention to detail, and that's what they're doing. Nice finish for Caden Lawson. And there it is by the numbers as Diamond Johnson connects from downtown. And hey, again, I mean, one of the numbers not on there, but that you could have highlighted. NC State's strength from beyond the arc, but how about as a team shooting basically 50% from the floor? You got to do that if you're going to average 80 points a game like NC State does. Skip pass to Trois. Or three off the mark, and the rebound pulled down by Madison Hayes. And now Johnson into the front court for NC State. One final thought just on what NC State has upcoming, because the one game we didn't mention, Lauren, was the other one on that list, the North Carolina game. And I think that one is interesting, obviously because just old rivals, State and Carolina. But, you know, January 30th in Chapel Hill, North Carolina is going to have revenge on the mind because the matchup at the beginning of the month in Raleigh, quite frankly, it was all NC State, a 72 to 45 final. You got to believe that Courtney Banghart's team has some revenge on the mind when they get the Wolfpack on their home floor. Well, we're talking about, you know, 10 games <laughs> um, and some some postponed, some canceled. But when game, when you have more games, you have more experience. And I'm sure they're, they've been watching NC State um, beat off ranked opponent after ranked opponent, come out against Virginia slow. Um, they're, they're definitely going to be in attack mode with a chip on their shoulder and ready to upset a team. NC State starters and really they're Regulars, presumably done for the night. And the reserves getting a lot of run. And frankly, Lauren, this is actually reserves that are young players that probably would have expected to see a lot more playing time this year if not for the return of so many of the so-called super seniors because of that extra COVID year of eligibility. Amadine Twa, the steal and the finish with the left hand. Amadine Twa leading Virginia with 12 points now. That extra year is definitely coming into fruition for this NC State team. You know, just like we talked about Virginia having deja vu of, of their last season, having to cut it short because of COVID and injury, uh, injured players, this NC State team, they're trying to get back to number one in the country. Um, and maybe, you know, the rankings don't matter too much, but that number one caliber type of play that we remember seeing a season ago is what their goal is. Diamond Johnson can't finish up close, but Madison Hayes the rebound. Nice pass, a pass across the paint to Johnson. Frustrated with herself for not finishing that time around. Players like Madison Hayes expected probably to see more playing time this season than she has been the beneficiary of, again, because there's so many players ahead of her still 
hanging around in Raleigh. And even for Hayes, you know, that is kind of an adjustment, so to speak. She's coming from Mississippi State, where she was the 2021 SEC All-Freshman Team honoree. And she played in all of their games, averaged about five points per game. But like you said, there's another layer or, or another, another layer of players above her. Um, but it gives her time to adjust into the ACC way um, that she now has to, to get adjusted. Cameron Taylor, the bucket for Virginia, just her second made field goal of the night. Pulls Virginia back within 18. You know, frankly, this hasn't been the best offensive performance from this NC State club tonight. Twa, another finish with the left hand. Twa playing well, wire to wire for Virginia. You know she's going to fight, and you know she's going to be on the floor. The ACC's leader in minutes per game, but almost 36 of them. Nice crossover from Genesis Bryant, but tried to dump it off into no man's land. Taken away by Alea Parker. Well, Pitts couldn't track it down, but it will stay with Virginia when we come back. NC State in control late. Four and a half remaining here in Charlottesville. Well, NC State, Wes Moore has his team in a familiar spot within the top five nationally. And you see what his program has done the last couple of seasons when it's come ACC tournament time, Lauren. But really, I mean, this NC State team has just become a fixture at the top of the ACC standings and also at the top of the national polls. Nationally, I mean, he is the WBCA National Coach of the Year, reigning coach of the year for a reason. But his team has been ranked fifth or higher in every AP poll since week three of last season, which is currently the best streak in NCAA women's basketball. But AP top 25, they've been in since February 20, February 5th, excuse me, 2018. Jeez. How many weeks is that off the top of your head, you know? Weeks, uh, I'm going to say 71 straight polls, just because that, that's, that's what the facts ah, say. Ah, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Alea Parker cleaning things up and finishes from the right side. And... Virginia suddenly back within 14 points. They have hung around at least to keep it competitive. And, you know, Westmore giving the reserves a lot of run here in this fourth quarter. But they have struggled on the offensive end, finally breaking that snap, snapping the 8-0 run by Virginia and two and a half minute scoring drought. The bucket up close from Sophie Hart. Miller shot fake and driving along the baseline. Appeared to run into her own teammate, and I believe Parker was on the baseline when she picked up the ball, and yes, she was. Yeah, and that's just a lack of movement from Virginia. You talk about the hustle and the energy that they've had in these past couple minutes. It really is that effort that Coach Thompson always talks about, that, you know, they don't coach effort. But there, that's just a read. Carol Miller's driving baseline. Leia Parker just rises up on that, on that free throw line extended just to get a soft touch at the basket. Wide open for three. James wanted another one, couldn't get it to go. Parker the rebound, outlet to Twa. A one on two the other way. And how about that deflected pass off of Pitts and Twa cycled through and retrieved it. Net result, a pass to herself. From the foul line, off the mark. And Clarkson couldn't keep it alive. We go inside at three minutes remaining. And NC State appearing to be on their way to win number 15 on the season. And again, they had Built up an even more sizable advantage. Got it up to 22, and that'll help there. Something NC State has not done all that well tonight, quite frankly. Hitting from beyond the arc. Yeah, you look at both of these team stats. They're not, no one's really having the best shooting night. NC State shooting just 38% from the field. Virginia, 31. And this is a team that also thrives from the free, free, free throw line, this NC State team. And they're only shooting 63. Um, obviously, that, that looks good, but for a team that shoots 75, um, it could be better. Johnson, the takeaway, and a brilliant pass. Back behind her to the trailing Genesis Bryant. And the Wolfpack now lead by 21. Timeout taken 
Looked like by Tina Thompson. And we are inside of two minutes in regulation. We'll take it with them. The Wolfpack by 21. Well, don't know if there was a cake, cupcakes, or what, but there is a birthday being celebrated on the Virginia bench tonight. And that is the former NBA champion, James Posey, new assistant on Tina Thompson's staff. I don't know if there was a cake, Channing, but I'm, I'm definitely sure there was a tweet. And, and that's how I knew it was it was Coach Posey's birthday. But yes, bringing a lot of experience to this coaching staff that is already filled with a bound of experience. Yeah, talk about a lot of success at the next level, littering that Virginia bench, to say the least. I mean, that's inspiring, too. You know, you talk about a team that hasn't seen a lot of success in the win column, but also just championship mindset. You know, all of these coaches bring that caliber to their practice every single day. And whether they have a good practice or a bad practice, um, these coaches know that, that you can't have too many of those bad ones. And so they're always bringing their energy, that championship energy. Um, and just, like I said, the experience to go out and tell, tell, tell their players, like, hey, I've been in this exact position, whether it's injury, um, whether it's having a sh bad shooting game. I've been in this exact, ex this ex exact situation, and you can get out of it. Offensive foul against Lawson will give it back to NC State. Another nice play from Isaiah James. And taking the contact there. Here is James. And the jumper off the mark. Parker the rebound. Outlet for Miller who wasn't looking for it. And the pass intended for Pitts intercepted. Zaya James again cruising in. Nice finish with the left hand. Isaiah James continuing to impress. And she's got nine points for NC State. You were pointing out, Lauren, sort of a statistical anomaly. Kunain with 10, the only NC State player in double figures tonight. We talked about their excellent three-point shooting, and they've struggled tonight. We talked about how many players always score in double figures, and go figure, they've only got one tonight. <laughs> I think we might have jinxed them, Channing. But yeah, I mean, James is the only person on that line, nine points tonight, that could get to the double digits. But this NC State team, they just haven't been having the best shooting night that we've seen them have time and time again. Well, instead, Timmons becomes the ninth player to get into the scoring column for NC State tonight. So instead of a bunch of players in double figures, all but one of the players who have seen the floor tonight have at least one point. Hey, and a win is a win. You know, I, I bet Wes Moore isn't, you know, excited about the effort and, and just the consistency of, of shooting and making shots and, and just enforcing your will that his team has played with tonight. But they got a win. They got out of, they're going to get out of Virginia um, and, and look forward to the next, their next opponent, which is going to be another test. Yeah, not necessarily as memorable as their last trip here in which they set an NCAA record by knocking down 13 consecutive threes. But... They do improve to 6-0 and in ACC play. Win number 15 in the books for Wes Moore and the NC State Wolfpack, who now enter a nice tough stretch of a bunch of ranked ACC opponents. But the Wolfpack victorious tonight. Lauren, final thoughts on this NC State victory? Well, but started on defense. Virginia had 21 turnovers, and NC State took advantage of that, scoring 26 points off of those turnovers. There were times where we saw NC State slow offensively, not really getting the ball um, in a motion offense, but then they just started attacking. They started getting to the basket, taking what the defense was giving them, and they started hitting more threes that, like we are used to. Six for 20 tonight, not the best, but they get a win, and they get to go back to North Carolina and get ready for the next opponent. No doubt about it. Well, that will do it for us tonight. For Lauren Moses, I'm Channing Poole saying so long from John Paul Jones Arena, where NC State gets win number five tonight in the ACC by a 66-43 final score. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on ACC Network, download the ESPN app. Until next time, good night from Charlottesville.
Welcome into Nothing But Net alongside Chelsea Gray, Kelly Gramlick, and Coach Muffet McGraw. I'm Kelsey Riggs, and what a fun day of action we had tonight for Thursday Hoops in the ACC. Let's look at another team in the ACC that has been rolling so far. That's number four, NC State, on the road, taking on Virginia. 2.30 to go in the first. Virginia up by five. Leah Parker, pass and roll, lays it in. Virginia up seven over the number four team in the country. But then here comes NC State, Coach. Yeah, they didn't get the start they wanted, definitely not. I'm sure Wes had some choice words for them at the end of that first quarter. But clearly they got it together and really did a great job. Everybody played, everybody scored. Elise Cunay, leading score with only 10 points, but she got her double-double, 10 and 10. Can you share with us what your choice words were? <laughs> oh, okay, no, we're not no, going to. Oh, coach's resolution. mic has gone out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep it clean here. And, Kelly, the response from NC State after that slow start was good. Well, we talk about Notre Dame's depth, and NC State has perhaps the most depth of any team in the entire country, maybe even more depth than South Carolina, especially at the guard position. So if someone's not feeling it, you just kind of go to the next player. Someone's going to knock down some threes. NC State's the best three-point shooting team in the country right now. And you take a look at NC State and what they're doing right now. 14-game win streak against conference opponents. Been on a roll, and that is their longest such streak since 1986. Chelsea. Teams don't always start off strong, but Coach told us earlier, it's how you finish, right, Coach? Not mm -hmm. how you start. When, when you're <laughs> in a game like that and you're a team that should win that game, as NC State ended up doing, what are you saying in those huddles? I think it's a bit of trust that they have. I think it's the internal leadership from their players, knowing the type of st and the style of play that they want. You know, it, it's a feeling. It's a trust that you look to your left and your right and you're just like, okay, now is the time. We got to get this done do the intangibles, get to the free throw line. I believe they shot 19 free throws. Being able to do the little things until they get into the rhythm. And credit Virginia, Tech, or Virginia, they tried to come out with a lot of hustle, a lot of fight to be able to jump on them early. But I think it's the camaraderie and the trust between the players, the coaching staff, and everything else in between to be able to pull out things like that. Kelly, that word trust is one that definitely stands out, especially with a team like NC State that has so many leaders and a player like Elisa Kunain who if things maybe aren't going right early, then you're still going to believe in the people that you have sitting next to you. Well, and I love what Chelsea said there, trust in each other, but I also think trust in yourself because this is a team that is shooting 41% from three. All these different shooters know they can knock down shots. So if it's not Crutchfield one night, it's going to be Brown Turner. They just have incredible depth, Coach, and you just feel like eventually someone's going to get it going. Well, and they never panic. They have that they poise. Yeah. They have that veteran leadership. They know things are going to come out their way, but I think Chelsea was speaking like a true point guard player. <laughs> I think the coaches might have been over a little bit more uh, <laughs> talking about what needs to happen. <laughs> um, I mentioned that this team has won 14 straight against conference opponents, and we've seen how many teams in the ACC are ranked this season. The competition, six right now in the top 25, and others receiving votes. Coach, just how impressive is it what Westmore has built there, dating back to last season, to get those 14 conference wins for the first time since 1986 in a row? Well, and since I was the only one alive in 1986, yeah, I think was I can it? speak to that. Like? Things were very very different back then. <laughs> <laughs> but he has done a phenomenal job. He really has. He's brought this program to the elite level nationally, and he's done it with hard work and great coaching. I think even more so, Kels. Yes, that streak is very impressive. To me, it's playing North Carolina and just destroying them, what they did last week. So we'll see if they can keep it up when they keep playing more ranked teams. But they set the tone because they played another ranked team in UNC, and that game was over in the first five minutes.
Seasoned is the word, right, Reina? Seasoned and experienced. NC State, one of the most experienced teams in the ACC. Of their top five scores, just one is a sophomore. The rest are upperclassmen. Two of their top five scores, Reina Perez, who we just mentioned, and Kayla Jones, are even grad students. And coach, speaking of grad students, take us back to school office hours with Muffet McGraw. We're learning calculus, is that right? <laughs> well, if you know your calculus, you know that one of the fundamental tools in your kit is the derivative, which measures the rate of change of a function with respect to the variables. We're going to talk pick and roll, and the variables here are the rate of speed that the ball handler is traveling at and the angle that the guard is defending her at. The post has to assimilate these variables and choose a spot on the floor that's going to be most advantageous for that guard. Here, the math just isn't working. As you see the defender slipping right through the screen, there's no contact, and we get a turnover. Watch the difference here on this next play. Watch Raina take her man down to the level of the screen. Now when she comes off, that defender cannot get over the top, which is what you want to do when you're guarding a shooter, and Perez gets the wide open free throw jumper. Here's Diamond Johnson, the best in the ACC at using the pick and roll. Watch the spacing between her and the screener. There's no way that defender can get through. She turns the corner, freezes the post player, which gives her teammate just a second to get to the rim, the perfect bounce pass execution. Here's a 1-4 high set, which is really difficult to defend because there's no help. You see both defenders stepping out on the ball, which gives Cunane a wide open path to the basket. Perez could make the pass, but she gives it over to Kayla Jones, and she makes the pass into Cunane. It's not a great pass, but Cunane, the All-American that she is, gathers it in and completes the play. And that's why I'm giving NC State an A in calculus. My gosh, coach out here just <laughs> putting together a whole lesson plan for us. Didn't know we were going to get all this. How about NC State's Diamond Johnson averaging 1.17 points per play on pick and rolls this season, tied with Michaela Dickens, second highest mark in the ACC. Coach is talking about uh, Chelsea. I don't even know if I can spell derivative and, and coaches out here just giving us a breakdown of all of it. Uh, every time coach speaks and she takes us into lessons, I'm like, did I learn that when I was going to school? Dude? I don't really, I don't know if I remember that lesson. I might have been, I was going on a away trip. But <laughs> what I will say <laughs> is that I love the pick and roll for two reasons. One, it's one of the hardest things to guard. Two, I just love passing the ball out of it. But I think what's like an underrated appreciation about the pick and roll are the other players on the court. If your spacing is amazing, it's so much harder to to defend. It's easier to read. If you have a good guard that's able to, you know, come off the pick and roll really nicely, the experience between in the relationship between your guard and your post player, it's huge. If you have a chemistry like no other, it's very very hard to guard. But I think the other people on the on the court with you is really, really big piece of that component because if you have the spacing, it's harder to help from the backside. You have shooters, you have the possibility of doing high-low. So I really think the other players make the big things happen as well. And those other players are called derivatives? They are. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. I can say I finally took calculus, but you know, coach, that was a great breakdown. And you know, when you look at pick and roll and you look at guards, the guards that are in the pick and roll, they really have to be able to score it to make it as lethal as it is. And that's what's so good about Diamond Johnson is that she can score from anywhere. And same thing with Raina Perez. And when you can shoot it, you point it out, you got to try to go over that screen, especially on Perez. With how quick she is and how good everyone is around her, the derivatives, it's so difficult to get over that screen and to get back. Yeah, it really is. You know, and that could have been a history lesson. The pick and roll has been around for like 100 years. <laughs> yes. And here true. we are just still having trouble guarding it. I can't mm. wait to see what kind of lesson we get next. We better start doing some science experiments <laughs> oh or something gosh. here, Coach. We're going to have fire some goggles planes. on. <laughs> you never know. We will see what we get next, and we'll see if uh, Duke has the derivative over <laughs> NC State. Did I use that right in a sentence? <laughs> Who knows? Can't spell it, can't say it, but Duke, <laughs> NC State, they're going to go head-to-head. -to -head. Top 20 matchup here on ACC Network on Sunday.